Did you know that the first video game with vampires was called The Count, a text adventure game published in 1979? You're listening to the Xbox Hub podcast, the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos and opinions, make sure you visit the xboxhub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello, welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast, episode 163. My name is Gareth Bryan, I'm going to be your host. And on my virtual left is Mr. Darren Edwards. How are you doing, Darren? Hello, good evening. I'm very well. How are you? Oh, very good, thank you. And on my virtual right is Mr. Paul Renshaw. How are you doing, Paul? I'm doing very well as well, Gareth. Thank you very much for asking. I hope you're doing well. Good. We've got no one on the opposite stage. It's the three of us. So let's talk about the elections tomorrow. If we've both got you on the left. No, let's not do that. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. That's <laughs> is it the politics? <laughs> yeah. I it's, can't wait. It is. Um, <laughs> we won't be doing that today. Um, Right, weeks. What have we been doing this week? Uh, Darren, what's your week been like? Uh, well, my week has been quite busy uh, with work because it's been bank holiday weekend. So that's all I've been doing, really, and dipping into some games that we'll talk about shortly. But yeah, other than that, not much else, to be honest. Okay. Um, what about you, Paul? I've just got to ask. So when it's bank holiday weekend, does everybody suddenly think, I need a new watch? Is that, is that how yes. it works? Yeah. Oh, cool. You know, you I've, I've, never, I've never thought that. So when everybody <laughs> kind of goes, oh, you enjoy your day off and you only need to book three days to get 10 days off or whatever it is, that does not apply to everyone. Remember that, listeners. Okay. Yeah. All I'll say is that you could have been a journalist. Well, yeah, <laughs> instead of ended up here. So, you know, it's funny how I like that, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it, though? Right. Shall we talk about me now? Talk about you, Paul. Enough of the limelight. Yeah. Um, Right, the big news for me this week, I'm going to uh, tootle my own trumpet a little bit, if you'll allow me. Yeah. Um, me and two of my friends decided to take part in a little kind of fishing match. Um, now, I'm sure that you guys are all fully aware of how fishing matches work, yeah? I'm on yeah, Facebook. No Go on, yeah. Oh, obviously. Right, yeah. well, basically, you are assigned a random peg or swim, and you have to then make the most of where you're given. and catch as many fish as you can and at the end of the match you weigh the fish and whoever's got the greatest weight wins basically yeah now the match was very close there was three of us one fella got two pounds and 11 ounces one fella got two pound and 14 ounces and i got 12 pounds and nine ounces so i won by a considerable margin and I've been trying to be magnanimous in victory, but you know when Jeremy Clarkson tries not to do his smug face? It's been kind of like that all week. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I'm very happy with myself anyway. Very good, Paul. So, uh, there you go. Thanks, thanks, Gareth. I like I really the way you, appreciate the you effort that try to put in the it. rules of fishing into the podcast to get your fishing-only podcast. Listen, mm-hmm. the fishing-only podcast, mate, is a surefire hit, I'm telling you. <laughs> you have to host it, though. Uh, yeah, I'll do it from the bank. Um, Absolutely, from the bank with Gareth Briley. That would be awesome. I tell you what, though the um, the Bob Mortimer and um, what's his name and oh, they're brilliant. Yeah, that's yeah. great. You do that program's great because it just looks beautiful when oh, they are. Yeah, that's yeah, right. it's, yeah. it's, it's gone, really gone good. fishing. It's very good. If you think. Um, good. Thank you, Paul. Um, what have I been doing? I have been. I've been practicing my allegiance to the king. Um, which happens on Saturday. <laughs> really? Apparently, that's caused quite an uproar. Oh, radio for this I know morning. it's very funny. Um, <laughs> do you people stand up in their living rooms and do it? I just well, you know, each to their own. Um, just be you doing it in the middle of the street, Gareth, <laughs> in your Union Jack suit. <laughs> that happens on oh, Saturday, man. I think, isn't it? Saturday, the allegiance to that. Yeah, um, I'm curious as to what happens if you don't. I know. Do well, the Daily Mail. Did he turn up and kick you in the plums? Well, the Daily, <laughs> Daily Mail read that their headline was Everyone, all's got to do this. And it underlined all. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, it was like, it, like that wasn't the point, I don't think. I don't think they were saying everyone's got to do it on the pain of death. It was like, yeah, well, very funny. On the pain of something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and 
I, I, I went to an award ceremony on 90, I, got, not, I did a thing called 90 Second Stories that I've been doing for a year and a bit and uh, it was up for an award and I got a runner-up award, which is very good. I'm very pleased with that. Oh, well done. Again. oh congratulations. On Sunday Gareth. night, an award ceremony. Yeah, so that was nice. A special mention, that's what it's called, a runner-up. Basically, it's runner-up. Um, <laughs> like wooden spoon. Yeah, it's like the runner-up. There's only two people, isn't it? No, there wasn't. There wasn't. Um, um, good. Oh, but let's talk about games, because there's one game that's uh, <laughs> caught, that came out yesterday, if you're listening to the first, it came out on Tuesday. Uh, May the second, and it caused uh, well, people had a breakdown. I think on the on the on Twitter and all the socials, and uh, and the... is it that little rat alike again? <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> uh, it's Redfall, um, which came out on Tuesday, and we've already reviewed it. So on the site, I think um, Alistair is it? It's Alistair. 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 He's done. Um, oh, he's done a review for us. He's good review. Really good. He gave it a three and a half out of five and acknowledged the problems. I think, first of all, the, the internet went mad just saying this is the end of Xbox. They've released a game that is unfinished. It's terrible. Oh, my God. This is what happens to all Xbox games. This is awful. This is a disgrace. And it, it around the around the board, it kind of was getting maybe at the low end, fours, uh, tens. On the high end, maybe an eight. It was one eight out of ten, I think. But generally, people around the six or seven um now i think we've all had a little go i've played about four to five hours of it how much have you done paul 45 hours did you just four, say four to five hours i was going to say <laughs> goodness me is that, sorry is there it's, an actor's life for me i don't goodness. think I, I don't think it's that long yeah four to five hours yeah and uh, right on solo paul what have you done what have you played um i've played maybe a couple of hours solo okay. and then just when you were messaging us and trying to find out where we were it might have been that me and darren were trying a bit of co-op mm, good um so yeah i mean so far the the solo game seems pretty solid i mean it's nothing spectacular it's not quite as good as i was hoping but i've not had any real issues with it um apart from the fact that the enemy ai the human ai in fact is as they're as dumb as a box of frogs mm. honestly it's just um you know there was i had like four people lined up on a bridge and i sort of shot them from left to right with a sniper rifle and that when he's each one fell over the, the other guy next to him sort of looked at him and then looked away again i was like <laughs> oh right <laughs> obviously yeah nobody's bothered if you just shoot his mate right next to him cool um but other than that i mean we had a few little um glitches with the um with the co-op experience right when i when i first spawned in darren was running around and all i could see was his gun <laughs> but this was in the safe house where normally you don't have a gun out so yeah that was a bit peculiar um but you know it's it's just it feels rushed it feels like they were given a date and whatever state the game is in on that date that's what's going out and for a first party title, I'm not sure that's the way. So, I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, Darren, let's get your thoughts first on our way in. Uh, well, I, I agree entirely with what Paul said. I've only played about an hour on my own and then about 20 minutes with Paul earlier. And it does have rough edges. I think the 60 FPS debate we had is unfortunately the tip of a little iceberg in terms of other glitches and things if it was just the fps the performance then it may well have had a warmer reception but i think um i think ali's review is very fair i read it earlier on and i think all this talk of abysmal and i, I don't think it's as bad as that i think people like a um gravy train to jump onto and the narrative has been no first party games and now the first party games that are coming out the narrative has been well they can't get that right this is the end of xbox etc etc and that's just going to continue unfortunately now because we've got starfield coming up and the pressure is kind of building on that to deliver and it makes you wonder will it ever be able to deliver what people expect so i think i think it it they have got it out um 
probably earlier than it should have been, but it's nowhere near abysmal. I'm sure they can kind of patch it up, but will the opportunity have passed then? I suspect it may have done. And unfortunately, the narrative of, oh, well, you know, Xbox have launched an unfinished game, will take over. Because if you want to play devil's advocate and flip the argument, the argument around no first party games, if you take away the Bethesda acquisition from a few years ago, you could argue some people have a point. Where are they? You know, you've got yeah. Forza coming at the end yeah. of the year. I'm still guessing November, December. What 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 else is going on? And I suppose that's the danger is there's no there's no counter argument yet. I'm just, I, I'm I'm sure it'll come in June, but there's no counter argument yet to silence the critics. So yeah, it's a bit of a it's a bit of an interesting one, I think. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I, you know, as I said, I've played 45 hours. Of, no, I've played <laughs> 40, 45 hours. Just of. how you play games, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, when I loaded it up, because I heard so much how, how I was like in the first sort of like little tutorial mission that you're trying to get out. And it's all, it, just for people who don't know, it's, it's this place called Red Four, and it's, it's full of vampires, and you're basically going out to, to save everyone and, you know, kill the vampires really bit by bit, neighborhood by neighborhood. And the first kind of hour, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm really into this. This is fine. I had no problems. It's, I'm playing on my own solo. There's no glitches. The enemy seems okay. And then I started to go in and go, okay, oh, this is Far Cry. It's Far Cry. <laughs> it's Far Cry mm. in Red Far This is what it vampire. is. Yeah. You're just, you know, taking district by district, doing the odd missions inside. Missions. It felt really similar, even kind of like the way you get ammo, the way you kind of, you know, you're you're free to how you do it, where you go in stealthily, where you kind of go in mm. attacking, where you just ignore the enemies and sort of like just go in and do the missions by lock, lock picking and and climbing onto rooftops and just doing everything like that. And you're in each character's got their own kind of special abilities, which are quite cool, some of those, and that's that's all fine. I think I think there's two there's a ma- there's kind of major things here. I think even I can hear everyone with this it's not finished, they shouldn't have put it out. I think the the big thing is this game is designed in a certain way. This game it doesn't matter if it came out in November next year. I don't think people like the game on the setup of the game. What we just said it is no matter no matter of like how whether it's going to be sixty frames per second, whether it's going to be perfectly co-op and that AI the AI is not going to change really that much. Um, it's the way the game is designed. It's the art of the game, which is basically designed as a co-op. Play. That's why there are the cutscenes are kind of limited. I think it's kind of like the cutscenes are sort of like um, animations, aren't they? Like still frames and with, yeah. a, with yeah. voiceover. So it's it it feels like it. It almost feels like a bit like the division in a sense, like that sense as well, which is essence a co-op game as well. It's it's more yeah, about the this kind of system is like that. Yeah, it? so it, it feels it's like one of those designs. So I think some people have had a problem with it going. This isn't the game that I expected. It isn't Dishonored. It isn't Deathloop from the mm-hmm. expectation. Which, which, but they, they were single player games. So yeah. with the story, it's a completely different thing. And it's whether you like that or not. You know, it's and the and the and the graphics is the art style, I think, as well. They've gone for that kind of like that visual look, which isn't about which probably isn't showing off what the series X. It still looks pretty, but it isn't showing off it's not Unreal Engine Five, is it? No, it's not gritty realism. No. It's more comic book type uh, visuals. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, and I think, like you just said, with two of you playing co-op, I think if they can get that co-op experience, so that feels absolutely fast and fluid and fun, and it isn't like your guns just walking around. I think that's where the <laughs> that's where that game lives and fails, really, doesn't it? If that becomes something people want to do, but the problem is at the moment it's got such a bad rep, people are just not gonna. And also, uh, there's another big question. I'm sorry, I'm talking too much about it, but the big thing is like, am I enjoying? It? Is what happens if I would have bought that game instead of I'm playing it on Game Pass? So mm. if I would have bought that game for sixty quid, yeah, sixty seventy quid, isn't it? Yeah, what would I? Very good point, what, isn't it? what would I thought then? And I don't know about that. That's that sort of makes me do go. Oh, actually, maybe they're kind of right about maybe that takes it down a bit. Because it's fine for mm-hmm. Game Pass. It's fine. It's great. It's a free game. It, oh yeah, this is quite so after the three. But yeah, maybe is a. I don't know. I don't know. 
What do you mm. think? Do you think you want to go back to it? Do you think you have, it, I'm going, it, I'm going oh, to keep trying it. Um, I think we need to organise a sort of Xbox Hub game night and all play. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because it's, it's, you you two are always really good about turning up for these game nights, aren't you? <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> Neil's dead reliable as well, so you know, I'm sure it'll all go swimming. I carry on. I carry on playing on my own for a bit. No, I'll just turn you. <laughs> I think I'm going to do it. I think I'll finish it. I've got, I'm, you know, I've got, I like my Far Cry games, so I've gone quite happy just mm. just doing it, taking neighbourhood by neighbourhood. I've taken down one boss already. Um, I quite enjoy it. I'm not surprised in 45 hours. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like the missions, but it might get very samey, same as Far Cry does, you know, mm. later on. But you just, you just, I kind of, I like the world. I like seeing the design of the the town. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not a disaster. But it's not, and you know, I said this last week in the podcast as well. I said Redfall's been quite quiet. <laughs> mm, he did. Mm, I think he really they did. did know a little bit that it wasn't going to blow people's minds. Mystic Gareth strikes again. We we'll talk about we we'll do the games, and then we we'll talk about Xbox um, in the next bit, in the next segment. Whether we can, whether it can be saved, whether it can be saved. <laughs> Is this the end of Xbox? Just <laughs> selling to Sony. That's they're the only people who could save us now. <laughs> Um, I did say one thing before we go on. I said it is it's, this year for me. It's been the year of third party games because mm, yeah. we've had, which is it's a row Hogwarts, um, the Dead Space, the Resident Evil, um, the Star Wars game that's just come out. So it's these are the kind of these are the ones that have kind of worked. And we haven't had like with PlayStation, they had that that dreadful game in January, and there was a god of god here. Not dreadful. It was like average. I thought it was called the the for spoken. Yes, for spoken. I think I've seen. Is that the few... one that finished the studio off? Yes. Yeah. 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 I've seen a few um, maybe unfair memes who have kind of pointed out that all is forgiven for spoken. We forgive you. For spoken is all right. It's 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 good. I, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. saw something on the Twitter that said the same yeah. thing. But yeah. um, Red Ball has got. Like, I think it was a 63 Metacritic and Forspoken is 62. So it was like, look, Redfall is clearly better. <laughs> yeah. And I think um, Atomic Heart didn't blow everyone's uh, thing away. I know that wasn't, uh, but that was on the Game Pass for the Xbox League. Mm-hmm. And then Microsoft Legends. Um, Minecraft called, Legends. Minecraft Legends, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, Microsoft Sorry, Legends is a different thing. That's like Windows 3.1 and, you know. Yeah, just the workers from Microsoft over the years. Just, um, just their highlights. The CEOs battling out. Do you know, it, it's, it's the work you put into getting all the details right on <laughs> yeah, this podcast. Yeah, I know, exactly. Me the most. <laughs> Listen, they're, they're, at Microsoft Studios, they're scribbling down game ideas now. I know, they are. <laughs> Microsoft Legends, um, brilliant. I think, Bill Gates is the final boss. <laughs> <laughs> Minecraft Legends which Paul is reviewing at the moment, is, you know, again, that hasn't had a, an amazing reception. You know, been an average reception. Yeah. So, we had Hi-Fi Rush. That had a great reception. Yeah, that did, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and that, that was the shadow drop, wasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. No, no, no build-up, no hype. I wonder if that helped it in a way, because nobody was putting unfair expectations on it. Good point. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I am worried now about Starfield, though, I've got to say. They are, if this doesn't it, blow it, everybody's stocks clean across the room, then... It's, it's worth saying they are completely different studios. Even though I'm yes. a yeah. there are different people making it, so it's not like it's the same gang. So it's like, yeah. it's yeah, it's, And it might not blow everyone's socks off. You know, it might just be... I think there's a sort of accept, a thing we're thinking about ne- this Jed games, that they need to be so completely different, but I don't know. Maybe they've gonna... got to. They've got to just. They've got to come out of the starting gate and just be amazing. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, if if Starfield doesn't, if it, well, I mean, I'm sure we all remember the launch of Fallout New Vegas and how uh, exciting that was. <laughs> Can you imagine if Starfield launches like that? Oh no, I'm having yeah. anxiety now. <laughs> no. um, let's talk about other games. What have you been playing? Um, other games. Other games. We haven't got, we haven't got time for other games. It's all Red Bull. <laughs> um, Dara, what have you got first of all? Uh, so I have reviewed a game called Cannon Dancer 
in its native Asia, or it was known as Osman over here. So it was released back in 96, I think it was, and it's like a side-scrolling kind of fighting type game, but it plays a little bit like a cross between that and like a platformer. So um, they've re-released it because it never got released for home systems or home consoles. It was released in the arcades, but it was at the end of the kind of arcade craze as people were migrating over to gaming in their own homes. So um, it's it's. I thought it stood the test of time pretty well, to be fair. Um, it's quite short, but then it gets quite challenging towards the end, so depending on how many how many times you die and get game over and have to start again, you could be with it for a little while. But essentially, um, there's an evil like uh, witch who enslaves the world and you've got to go and beat off the henchmen and then take them down. <laughs> so maybe not in that way, Paul. Mm. I regret my choice of words. <laughs> uh, Unbelievable. This is what happens when you record it. Oh, sorry, um, sorry. So you, know, <laughs> you have to um, basically play through five or six different levels. Uh, and then it falls into that trope at the end of all the bosses come back again and you have to fight them all in a row and all that business. So it, it was good. It's still good. The problem is, is they've re-released it. It's not really changed. They've got some new menus, which aren't particularly pretty. And you can fast forward and rewind and you can play the original arcade mode with a couple of little modifiers. So you might get some extra lives. So you might get the ability to double jump or you can pe- play like a easy mode with loads of lives just so you can experience the game and then you can play the japanese version that's going to cost you 25 pound wow. for about half an hour's worth wow. of gameplay wow. and then just a localized version that you can't understand what's being said on the screen so yeah it, it's an odd one i think that they also release like a physical special edition so it's definitely one for a niche market. And there'll be collectors out there who will be very excited about this game that I've never heard of. But it still plays well. But this is not the way to try it out because it's far too expensive for what it is. Wow. Well, I, well I like it, Darren. No. Good. Okay. No. Thank Can you. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Of course. Does it have anything to do with Richard Osman? <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. I was kind of hoping he would emerge as the final boss, but uh, no luck there, unfortunately. Okay, good. cool. Good. Thank you, Dan. Um, Canon Dancer. Um, Paul, what's your first game? Uh, right, well, as regular listeners to the podcast will know, I am a big fan of a Souls-like game. Um, so when one uh, seemed to appear on the horizon, I would I put my hand up for it and played it. It's called Stray Blade. And saying it's a Souls-like is selling it a bit short. It, it kind of is. In, the, in the, the setup of the game is you find this valley and something happens and you end up with this stone embedded in your chest. Now, while you've got this stone in your chest, you can just you can't die. Basically, you get brought back to life, but you cannot leave the valley that you're in with this stone in your chest because you will die for good. Um, and then what follows is you need to explore this whole valley and master three three elements um, that you can then use to enter the final section. And the, the premise, the setup, the story is all really good. Um, the combat is exciting as well. It's, it's quite a bit like, do you remember Rise, Son of mm, Rome? I do, yeah. Um, where you were fighting away and every so often the enemies would flash a certain colour and you had to react with a certain button press, yeah? In this, there's a similar thing. If the enemies flash blue, they're about to do an attack that you can parry. And if they flash red, they're going to do an attack that you have to dodge. Mm. And if you get a perfect parry or you dodge dodge at the right time, you get some of your stamina back and you can then press the attack. Um, So the combat system works really well. The problem with the game is, I mean, I'm getting a, a, a bit of a case of deja vu here, but the problem is the polish. The the way the game is sort of hung together isn't the best. Um, it's it's simple things like, you know, in a Souls game, you, you, you the best way to fight things is to attract one of an enemy's attention 
draw them away from the rest, kill him and rinse and repeat, yeah? Mm -hmm. In this game, if you do that, the enemy will come a certain distance towards you, you start to fight them, and then they think, oh, I'm too far away from where I should be, and they teleport from in front of you right back to where to go. <laughs> That's annoying. And I'm like, oh. well, you're half dead, and you've just teleported back. That's so, really bad. Yeah, that is annoying. Um, I've knocked enemies into walls. Every enemy, when you kill them, drops stuff that you can pick up. I've done, like, finishing animations and knocked them into the nearest wall so I can't pick up the gear they drop. I've fallen through the scenery. I've had no end of um, issues with it. But at the same time, I've really enjoyed what I've played. Oh. So uh, the review's live on the site. I gave it a three out of five. I couldn't in good conscience give it any more. Um, but, yeah, if, you, if it sounds like your cup of tea, give the review a read and see what you think but it's a good game it's just not it's not a great game let's say it like that right okay stray blade it is it is one that you might like gareth I'm not actually oh so, yeah this. it's just um, a gareth game you're too busy putting four to five hours into redfall <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> good stray blade um it's back to me isn't it oh, i've got a you know, I think I might have said this on the podcast, but not with you two on it. In Rise, the, the best thing about Rise, that game, is that I've got a very good friend who's in it who plays as sort of like the baddie brother. And he, he had, there's a boss battle when you have to beat him. And <laughs> it's the weirdest experience of my life. I said, go and beat my I friend think you did. You have yeah, told I said, me that yeah. before. He, he, I was so very he, impressed. He does duplicates. He triples up and so on. Okay, um, my next game, after the exciting games of Cannon Dance and Stray, is... Tram Sim. Oh, this is a game. Oh, oh. Buckle up. This sounds great. I think I've done a Let's Play that might be out soon, probably when I do the review, which will be a couple of days. Um, tram Sim is exactly what it is. You're, um, <laughs> you're driving trams <laughs> in two cities, in the city of Munich and in the city oh. of Vienna. Did yeah. you, you said trams. I thought you said tramp. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, there is a tramp yeah. sim. In the sorry, sense. sorry, I, I had a completely different game in my head. Oh, yeah. Sorry, go on, Gareth. Trams. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're driving trams basically. So you've got a you've got a route, <laughs> and uh... and you're a homeless guy and you're driving trams. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can hear those pens scribbling again. These ideas are coming faster today. Um, yeah, it, it's, that's basically you get into a tram. A start of the day. There's no story, <laughs> and uh, you start your tram when it's gonna like. On a normal route, it's like early in the morning, and then off you go. <laughs> and you can make it as difficult, like, you no, know, you've got to know all the buttons, or make it as easy as you want to do. You can make it sunny or, or weather, or you can make it even Christmassy. You could do it at Christmas time. Um, the good thing is, yeah, they're and you know, look quite good. They look quite visually good if you don't look at it too close. Um, <laughs> but it, it looks the lighting's good. Um, I've played a lot of these games. I've played train sim games. I've played bus simulator games for the site. So they all have a kind of very similar thing, as in all the passengers look the same. There's always triplets sitting next to each other in the, in the, in the, in the tram. Um, the, the good thing with this, it's quite... I, after doing the train sim games, which is quite complicated, like even getting the thing started, you're pressing about 20,000 buttons. This is a lot easier, as you can imagine, a tram is. You're sort of just pressing one thing knocking the button and then you're off you go there's something kind of <laughs> one route might take you an hour and a bit <laughs> so there's something quite relaxing about driving around Vienna going oh look at that it's just <laughs> um, are, you, are you stopping to look in the shop window? I am stopping like you're doing the shop, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it is I mean it's going to sell loads as these games do people love doing these sim games um, especially in Europe so it's uh, yeah it's uh I mean I think it's it's a shame there's only two cities. Um but there's enough Ooh, variation. We should there, do but... nothing in one. We've got a tram here. Oh there you go. Another good pitch. Yeah. I have to check though, trams are on rails, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So is it is it literally just you've got to drive and stop and drive and stop? Uh, basic if you've got it without any um if you've got it on kind of like easy setting, you can just do it like that. So I mean when I've got an easy setting, when I first did it, I'm not really, I'm not really worried about the cars. I'm sort of just going, I'm a tram. I'm fine. You've got to stop in front of me. But I think you've got to, the more settings you put on, it's more like obeying rules, stopping in the right place, pressing a lot, pressing a kind of lot more buttons to 
open the doors so it's a bit more kind of like hands on and you're indicating you're not you're getting points deducted if you're banging into cars what's annoying is like when you get a speed up there's always a tram in front of me it's really annoying <laughs> that's just going quite slow and like a lot of times i'm just waiting for this tram to move <laughs> yes really. so you can't overtake it no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's a great life well that's, that sounds like an amazing game. Do you think I'd like it, Gareth? No, none of you would like these games. Only <laughs> okay. me. I'm the only one who play them. Um, yeah, I mean, that's coming out soon, and there'll be a little oh, let's play for an hour. <laughs> an hour let's play. It, yeah. An hour of driving a tram. Yeah, but you'll see goodness. Vienna. Um, fans of Vienna will like it. Um, one more. Please game. tell me you're wearing a, a a tram driver's hat <laughs> in the video. I, I might be. Yeah. yeah oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. Good. One more game each. Let's go for Darren. What's your second game? Uh, so talking of games that we seem to get a lot of, I am also playing a game called Panic Porcupine, which is a retro style platformer. God, and that's when I see those... unusual. <laughs> yes, I know. When I see those words, my heart immediately sinks. Um, uh, there's no other way of saying it. It's basically a bootleg copy of Sonic the Hedgehog. That's the best way I can describe it. So there is even a portrait of a very muscular Sonic the Hedgehog on the wall and then a bit of a throwaway reference to a well-known hedgehog's busy shooting a movie. So it's kind of aware of that, but it doesn't really excuse the fact that it pretty much takes every idea from Sonic and just puts it in like a different colour palette. To the noises, to the like the spin, the roll that the little porcupine can do, um, and just to boot as well. The controls are a little bit delayed in terms of response time, so you're constantly getting cut in half by buzz saws or falling onto spikes and dying. So it's one of those games where it's not meant to be frustrating, but it's really frustrating to play. So I have got to play a bit more of it um, before I finalise my review. But uh, yeah, it's um, not one I would recommend, unfortunately. <laughs> how can I speak? I'll, I'll leave it at that. How much is it, though? Do you know? I don't know. I'm guessing it's £4.19 right, because yeah. that's the classic. Uh, but I will, um, I'll find out and come back to you very shortly. Okay, brilliant. Um, thank you, Panic Porcupine. Bless them. Good luck to them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, Panic doesn't sound anything like Sonic, does it? No, so. good luck to them. They've just gone for everything today. How can you make quick money? Um, right, Paul, what's Hello. your last game? My last game I'll talk about is a little shoot 'em up called Hyper 5. Um, it's a kind of old-style um, side-scrolling shoot 'em up um you fly through various locations and shoot baddies and then kill a boss at the end of the stage if you've ever played a shoot 'em up in your life you know exactly what's going on here um mm. the interesting things about it are the graphics are quite good um they're quite they're quite ambitious they're not the best graphics i've ever seen but at least they've had a go do you know what i mean <laughs> So like the the starting <laughs> sequence when you zoom in the stage is it's nicely 3D and everything. Um and as you go through the levels, you acquire upgrade points that you can then spend to upgrade your ship in certain ways. And there are certain missions in each um thing in each stage to try and achieve, like kill a certain number of this enemy and you'll unlock a different thing. And so it's it's okay. Um, it's not going to set the world on fire. Um, and I will get round to writing the review one of these days. Um, but yeah, Hyper 5. If you're looking for a shoot 'em up game and you're not too fussy, it might be right up your alley. Good, Hyper 5. All right, brilliant. <laughs> um, um, I have an update for you. It's £6.69. Oh my God, it's gone over. Oh my goodness. Um, but it does run in 60 FPS, so yeah. it's not all bad. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, panic pop. pop more than you can stay for Well, I've well, said more than you can stay for other games that have this week, yes. <laughs> um, good, thank you, gentlemen. That's our games. Let's just have some news. Now, instantly, there's a bit of news today. It, some might say it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's panic by Xbox, but no, they've, uh, they've basically just put out their showcase news today. So, we know the Xbox Game Showcase is going to be on Sunday, the June the 11th. 
Uh, I think it's going to be at 6 p.m. Um, UK time. And okay. it's going to be followed straight afterwards by Starfield Direct. So that would be a kind of like more in-depth look at Starfield for the Xbox Game Showcase. Um, and I think they're going to do something else like a showcase extension that they did last year, which is more in-depth interviews with all the games on the 13th, June the 13th. Um, looking forward to this. This is interesting that they put this out straight after. St- I think it's the way of just going. It's almost like they're trying to distract from the bad news, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, I, I, I am, but I'm also now very anxious about it because of all of the swirling opinions and doomsday predictions and goodness knows what else. So I don't know if I'll be able to enjoy it in quite the same way. What do you, let's just talk, the three of us, just, uh, what do we think? How do we think Xbox are, are doing? Are they, do you think... Yeah, I'm just going to say, how do you think they're doing this year? What, what's, what's, your, what's your thoughts? Darren, what's your thoughts? What's your... I think we talked about it last week. I mean, I, I don't know the ins and outs of the financial situation. I know there have been some reports that hardware sales have dropped, but that kind of feels like they've been budgeting for that because of the shift towards Game Pass and signing people up to that. So financially, Microsoft are huge. So I, I'm sure, you know, it's too early to say like they're in any sort of real trouble. Um, but I think PR wise with gamers, I think they are struggling. Um, and it's all well and good, you know, for for Phil to come out, I think was it last year now and say, Yeah, we get it. We haven't really had enough first party games, but we're working on it. It does it just makes me think there's so much pressure on the showcase and then by extension Starfield to kind of deliver to silence the critics but it just it's one of those things where you're never going to silence everybody but it just feels like the noise is louder than it has been for a long time so i think it's financially fine but but in terms of kind of currying favor with with gamers i think they're they're on a bit of a downward spiral at the moment paul is that fair um yeah i think darren's sort of hit the nail on the head there hasn't he um they 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 seem to, certainly in the case of Redfall, they've over-promised and under-delivered, basically. Um, it was going to be the greatest vampire game ever, and this, that, and the other. And it's it's okay. Um, but, you know, it's like, like Darren said, Starfield is the one that's making me worry now, because I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, it should be good, Skyrim in space, I think I've called it before. So... That's what I'm wanting. I'm wanting something that scale, that memorable, that good. Um, and hopefully in June we'll see something like that. Um, as far as money-wise, I mean, we heard this week that the CMA have blocked that Activision Blizzard deal, haven't they? So I yes. don't know what's going to happen with that one. Um, because, you know, apparently the UK punches well above its weight in the tech world it seems so because we've said no it now might not happen um i'm I'm sure that microsoft are going to appeal but that's just just another layer of worry isn't it so um on the flip side i've not seen anything this year that has made me want to turn my playstation on i don't think i've turned it on this year yet um so you know Xbox for me are still doing the better job of engaging with me. I mean, whether that's Game Pass, whether it's games that are coming out. Um, but yeah, I think the future, if we look towards it, I mean, I've got Starfield coming and I've got Forza Motorsport that I'm really looking forward to. But other than that, I mean, there's not a massive amount of games coming, is there? <laughs> Certainly not that we've heard about. No, I so. I think this is the big thing. The biggest thing about this is games. And I think we are about to hit loads of freaking games because everything has been delayed and delayed and delayed. And they're all going to, I think they're trying to fit the pieces together and see what's ready as well. I think the next, if we think about the year from April to April next year, I think it's going to be this gen games as well that are going to come out. I think as well with Redfall, if it, so last year's conference in June, the big promise, we talked about this in the podcast last time, it was you're going to be playing these games in the next 12 months. Um, I think we pretty got, I think we worked out last time, 70% of those games we are, but there's the big, some big hitters that are not in those 12 months. 
yeah. and Starfield and Force have been two of those. I think you've got also there's Ark is in there as well. I think that's quite a big one. You know, there's Hell Hellblade two. Yeah, so that so I, and that wasn't in the conference last year, but that was that. But I think if if we were thinking back to when Red Four was going to come out, and like you had Starfield the next month, or you had Forza in April, I don't think it would have had so much of a an uproar. Mm-hmm. I think because we're so desperate to play games, and we're so desperate to play this gen games as well, which we haven't had at all. We've had one or two, or you know, not really small. We're really desperate. That's why it's like people look at these games as like these are the saviors, and when they're not quite as so good, it uh, it kills people. I think. I think that's what we're seeing. You know, thinking about you know when the I think the most prolific bit of games was the 360 when that was there and the PlayStation probably 3 and all those games that came out that were iconic but there was no there was games every week wasn't there there was, there was a kind of dry period at the end but when they got going there was like a, a, a like a triple A game all the time wasn't there like these you know thinking that and we have we just haven't had that we've had these kind of gaps brilliant indie games brilliant games that we loved in India that we've really enjoyed but not those big triple um, A games and I think I think that's what people want. And I think, this is my only other thing, I think because we're being sort of distracted by contracts with Activision and, dare I say it, cloud gaming and everything else that goes with you, it's all good, so it's fine. But the actual, you know, all I'm interested in is playing games on my console, in front of my TV. I don't give a sort about the rest mm-hmm. of it. So I think, again, you've got to kind of get that right. You've got to get that stuff right. You've got to just get those games out and have that to us. That's it for me. The other stuff is like gravy. Mm. <laughs> nice to have, but not essential. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it's interesting, though, because when you talk about the Xbox 360 years and games coming out more regularly and things, is it just the expectations are much higher for what a big game is? Because if you think about all the third-party games, we have had a lot of games come out this year already. Yeah, yeah. And they've done really well. Not, they've, they've done brilliantly. I mean, they're good yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, so the, there are lots of games out there. I don't understand the obsession. I know first parties should be publishing big hitters regularly, exclusive to Xbox, to make you want to own an Xbox. But if you've got loads of good third party games coming out to kind of tide you over, mm. I think it's just people want something to be outraged about. And, you know, as I say, like when the narrative gains momentum that there's no games, people like to jump on it and be part of it and go, oh, yes, I think that as well. Da, 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 da. Mm. So I can't, in all good faith, turn around and say there are no games on Xbox or any console because that mm. would just be factually no. incorrect. No. No. It's just the, the, the thirst for a big first party game regularly like every couple of months i think has just become the expectation now and even with brilliant games like you know the star wars game and others that have released it doesn't seem to quench it because it's not an xbox first party title yeah and i think two of the really good games that have come out brilliant games um are remakes mm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you never, you never I, go back, Gareth. You never go, go back, back, and I've I've gone back twice, and I would love them. <laughs> you know, um, so it's it's it, it, that's becomes that I think that says oh we haven't got. And also, let's be you know me giving that example for three sixty. The reason they did have games coming because they were easier to make. <laughs> now yeah, it's like true. now it's harder to make because it's so big budget. It's so much money, much more money now, and much more um, the visual effects and everything else and the motion capture. It just takes longer to do this stuff and we have had a pandemic which did affect everything so mm. there are lots of but I just, uh, yeah I just think the other stuff is I just hope with the stuff that when they had the June stuff that I think we're going to see loads of stuff I just maybe that commitment to go we want some dates <laughs> straight away yeah I've got a question you might know the answer to mm. Gareth you know the the writer's strike in mm. the US that's happening again after it like crippled telly 15 years ago. Mm. Do you think that will affect elements of the yeah. games getting released? It must do, mustn't it? Yeah, I, I think so. Because they're massive projects. But we might not see that for two or three years. I mean, how long is mm. the writer's strike? Nine weeks, isn't it? Ten weeks. Ten weeks or nine weeks. Is it? Yeah, I think it will be, you know, it won't be games because a lot of stuff will be in development now that's done all their writing and all their motion capture stuff, I think. 
So mm. it might be stuff that I know people have worked on games that you know years ago that haven't been released yet. So yeah, so yeah. it's yeah, it won't be for a while. And they mm-hmm. might think of different ways of doing it, and they might just go, "Do we?" I don't know. They might, yeah. Got GPT. That's the way. <laughs> yeah, it might be. Yeah, it just might be that. <laughs> yeah, it will do. I've got a story I can tell you about the right strike after we finish the podcast, but I can't do it online. Oh no, so, we need okay. to know now. Yeah, I can't do it. We'll be sued. We'll be sued. Yeah. So it's yeah. So uh, yeah, no, it will do, but. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. We'll look forward to it. We want games. We're going to hopefully hear some stuff. And maybe we're nearer the time we'll talk about what we... We might have a little special about what we want to see from that. we we'll probably have lots a few of, weeks away. Yeah, there, there's going to be loads of leaks as well, isn't there? Probably as well. Yeah, probably. Oh, there's um, to be, yeah. yeah. Um, Xbox is not all that bad. Yeah. Like Paul yeah. said, I think it's right as well. With PlayStation, it's not... You know, they had God of War last year, but this year they've not had anything yet. They have got Final Fantasy coming up in June and they have got probably they had Man spoken well. what are you on about <laughs> yeah they had um, <laughs> uh, what's it called that Horizon DLC that oh they did have that yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah. and it's not a full game but it's still a no they did have that good chunk True. yeah um, don't forget Vampire Survivors had some DLC as well and that's amazing yeah that's true, <laughs> that's true. Um, let's have a quick look at, let's have a look at our our games in May um, the things that we're looking forward to in May Let's have a quick look. We've done a... Uh, who's done this? I think Dave Rossi did it on our thing. 12 games you should be playing the Xbox in May. I'm just going to go through them very briefly and then each of you can say whether you, some of you have played them already. Age of Wonders 4. Paul, you're reviewing um, this, I'm doing re- the review for that, yes. You enjoying it? Uh, yeah, it's flipping complicated. <laughs> um, you need to have the sort of finger dexterity of an octopus. But yeah, but it's it's... I haven't played enough to give a proper opinion yet. Okay. But it appears to be very deep and very complicated. Okay, okay good. And um, Redfall we've talked about. Um, Ravenlock, I think are... I'm quite looking forward to that one. That looks pretty cool. Game point. I think that um, review's on our site. Um, Dave's given it a four out of five. It's, it looks really... Yeah, it looks great. The, the visuals are brilliant. It's a little kind mm-hmm. of like zelda type thing. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think, I think that's the sort of gist of it, isn't it? Darren, you're but, going to, yeah, sorry, Paul, what are you going to say? No, I was just going to say I'm going to reserve judgment until I've actually played it myself. Good. Um, Darren, are you looking forward to Lego 2K Drive? Um, not particularly, to be <laughs> honest. But going back to Raven. What? <laughs> What's wrong the, with you? The studio also made a game that I loved and reviewed a couple of years ago called Echo Generation, mm. which had very strong Stranger Things vibes. So I do want to check out Ravenlock. Uh, but no, um, I am... I am not, yeah, no, not really. <laughs> I can't dress it up. I'm not that no. bothered about it. Paul's going to love this, isn't he? Oh, well, it's a driving game. So, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Lego and driving. What what more could you want? Um, amnesia, the bunker. Um, no, I, I like the Amnesia I'm not world. convinced by these Amnesia games, to be honest. I'm a bit scared. Yeah, I, I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> I like the idea of this, that you're transported to a World War One bunker and then you awaken with just one bullet in your barrel. It's your task just, to make your way out. Yeah, I love that. Shoot yourself. That'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. just, just get it over with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm into that. Um, the Warhammer 40,000 bolt gun. I don't know what that is. Any ideas about that? It'll be a Warhammer 40,000 universe game. I mean, I do like the universe. The games I've played before have been good. I've I, not heard much about this one. I think it's like a Doom shooter, like a 90s one. It's a retro Oh, it's, just, it's the shooter shooty one, is it? Yeah, right. Yeah, like a spin off. Yeah. They're normally like strategy games. So, mm. but yeah, I mean, they've done strategy games, they've done Diablo style games. So, yeah, why not a shooter? Lord of the Rings Gollum. <laughs> I. Lord is that, is, is it true that you this. played the, uh, the lead role in this, Gareth? <laughs> 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 um, Darren, you, what do you say? You haven't heard much about this. I, 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 well, I, I, it's probably, it's not on purpose. I just haven't watched anything or read anything about it. And it's like, because a couple of months ago, it was just like, oh, by the way, that's coming out in a couple of months. I was like, oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, I have no idea. I mean, Well, it, course, got, it got delayed about 20 times. No, it got yeah, delayed a few times. I'll be honest, I forgot all about it <laughs> <laughs> until it was confirmed it was coming out. So, I, yeah, I... I'll give it a look, I think, probably. I think I'm not it, particularly excited or not excited about it. 
in the middle of the road. I think it's fair to say, I think when it was meant to be coming out in November last year, uh, it, they, it did the previews, I think, in sort of September to a lot of people. Had a go at it, and people weren't that excited about it and they weren't that. Oh, okay. So I think they took it back to, you know, took it back and played around with it a bit more. So we'll, we'll see. It could be great. Mm. It could be, well, after yeah. the Rings of Power, I kind of took a break from Lord of the Rings because yeah. I didn't particularly enjoy that. No. It's a bit, it's very stealthy in this game. Um, right. Paul, Company of Heroes 3. It's your kind uh, of game, isn't it? Okay. Um, maybe. <laughs> I've, I've, I've not played the other two. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, what What is Company of Heroes, Gareth? Tell me all about it. It's um, it's one of your games. It's like, uh, what's it one called? One of my games. <laughs> one of those ones I wrote, you mean, yeah? It's a real-time strategy <laughs> game, isn't it? Uh, if you say so, I've not heard anything about it, but if it's an RTS, then yes, it'll probably end up in my lap. Okay, good. Um, these are our um, Xbox Hub <laughs> ones, so we don't know about that. Um, After Us, which is my game I really want to play this month, it's my favorite game of thing. Um, if you have a look now, they've got a little gameplay uh video that's just come out, and it's my is it a walking one. simulator? No, it's a platformer, but it just looks very oh, beautiful. Right. Has that kind of insidey vibe to it? Oh, is that is that the one with the animal spirits? Yeah, yeah, that did look quite good. I saw yeah. that, and you're playing this this bird with long silver hair or something. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's her. That's yeah, her. yeah. Uh, and there was I, th- I think I saw a video where there was a giant sausage dog spirit you had to make friends with or something. Yes, that's so, right. So yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, that looks quite good. Good, good. I like that. Um, Dan, do you look like the sound of that? Uh, from your excellent descriptions, I'm much more interested now than I was five minutes ago. <laughs> good, good. Uh, we're getting to the end of this list. Um, let's talk about the Mia Mia Sma Mia Sma Mia Sma Chronicles. Mia Sma Chronicles. Oh, thank you. Mia Sma. Yeah, so, you got to have to break them teeth in sometime. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Paul, you talked about this. Are you excited I about this? I have talked about this. This, this looked quite good. Yeah. Um, it's completely gone out of my head what it is, but I remember the name and I remember thinking this looks pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, I'll review that one, Gareth. Don't you worry. Good. It's Mutant Year Zero. Um, who like that? That's kind of the kiddie. Yeah. yeah. I knew that I'd remembered it from somewhere. Um, the other one, Mia and the Dragon Princess, which I've just reviewed. It should be on the site. Um, the little FMV game. That's quite good fun. Oh, uh, oh Paul, that's <laughs> <the eight. laughs> uh, Paul My favourite. Paul McGann's with it, yeah. Um, Tin Hearts, which is a game I talked about. We had the interview with it in a podcast that I played back in February. Um, yes. And that should be coming out mid-May, so we're looking forward to that 21st. Um, it's a little Lemmings kind of like clone, but much better than that. And that's a kind of list from our list, but also there's another game that's coming out. I just want to mention is come to Game Pass, Planet of Elena, Lana, I think more than Elena, Lana is coming out on May the 23rd on Game Pass. And if you remember, we did a bit in the podcast and I spoke to the developers at um, EGX. Do you remember this, you, you lot? Yes, I remember this. It's a really oh, beautiful it's game. Right. It's going to be a little pla- another platform game, but really stunning. So that's going to come to Game Pass as well. We've got games on Xbox. Loads of games. What are you talking about? Yeah, I don't know that what they're on about. Some madness. Um, so, yeah, that's good. Um, right, gentlemen. That's it. What are we looking forward to next week? <laughs> Who's oh, going? Paul. Go on, you go. Paul, go on, Paul. You go. Oh, first. Paul. I oh, thought you were me. going to jump in there. So I'm yeah. excited then. Uh, what have I got next week that's exciting? I have to go to the hospital on Tuesday to find out whether I'm slowly going blind. That's not, so that's that'll not, be good. You're not looking forward to that, are you? Not really, no. I mean, the, the exciting <laughs> bit is the uh, is the I've told I've talked about it before. The drops they put in to oh, yeah, dilate yeah. your eyes yeah. until they're sort of. But and then I've got to sort of go there on the train because I'm not allowed to drive, and then I've got to somehow get home again on the train when I can't see. So it's going to be very exciting. <laughs> oh, Goodness God. knows where I'll end up. <laughs> You've got uh, a spare room, haven't you, Gareth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. in case. Just in case. Just around. <laughs> um, other than that, I'm looking forward to um, starting Resident Evil 4. I've managed to pick up a second-hand copy of that. Oh, did you get it? Um, yeah, good yeah. I, I'm a bit disturbed because it's come in this steel book, but there's no sleeve on it, so I might have to send it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you've like um, minutes you've waited. Well done. I did. I did wait. Then I was good. <laughs> but yes, I did get it. Thank you, Gareth. Good. Um, and other than that, it's bank holiday. We're looking forward to seeing old Chuck get stuck on the throne. 
um, <laughs> and going to fishing. So, yeah. What Good. more could you want? What more can you do? Um, Darren, what about you? Uh, I'm in London. Um, and you. Work. Yeah. And I do enjoy John down there. Uh, just for a, a swinging trip for the day there and back quickly. <laughs> and then we're going to see Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which mm. I am looking forward to um because i do love the trilogy and it's had mixed reviews so as oh. they all seem to at the moment i think so we'll it's had, I've heard it really good i reviews, thought though. it had good reviews yeah. i think yeah, cause maybe it was an outlier it, I, think, I think the telegraph gave it the two out of five yeah, it's a telegraph oh, it serves you right for reading the yeah, telegraph. they're idiots by the way it just popped up on social media yeah 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 um, you've got your stuff um, for um, the trust. but um i think uh, yeah they <laughs> gave it they gave it two out of five so we'll see I, I like Guardians. I'm sure it'll be good. Good. Yeah, I'm going to. We've got some. We've got the Odeon voucher that we had about a year ago that I need to think. I need to go to cinema. Someone gave it to me for my mm. something. Yeah, so I think we might do that. Um, what have I got? I've got a week off. So I'm, we're not going to be here next week because I'm, I'm not here. And the easy. What idiots, do you mean you're not here? The easy idiots can't do it. And so. <laughs> 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 I've got a week off. That's, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I've got a week off, so we're not going to be on the podcast next week. We're going to come back on the seventeenth. But I've got to. <laughs> How can you off. tell when you have a week off or, or not? Oh, I mean, no, it's no, all the no same. Way. It's all the same for actors, isn't yeah, it? Unbelievable! Unbelievable! <laughs> um, <laughs> but until then, where can we find you if you want to talk to you about your eyes, Paul? Um, if you want to talk about my high eyes, then uh, grab my handle on the Twitter. Which is at Xbox Hub Paul. Brilliant. And Darren, if we want to talk to you about Guardians, where, where we, how do we get hold of you? Uh, well, if you want blow by blow election coverage, then All you good. can follow me on at 27 Darren on the Twitter. Good. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Can't wait. <laughs> you, might be getting, you might be getting muted or blocked. <laughs> I should have put that in for what I'm looking forward to watching, staying up all night to watch the election. Oh, yeah. I think I might do that as well. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing Keir Starmer in tears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll have to wait till next year. So <laughs> um, and I'm looking forward to the week. Oh, no, what am I doing? Where can we find you, Darren? Did I say that? Did you say you're your time? Yeah. Oh, I'm going yeah. mad. I'm already you're off. You're going to have to start listening. I'm already on my week off. I finished. <laughs> Um, and you can find me on GP Friday on Twitter and Twitch. But for now, gentlemen, thank you very much. We'll see you in two weeks' time. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye. You've been listening to the official podcast of the XboxHub.com. We had found all the notes of the show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook. <laughs>